What's up everybody, it's your boy Steve Bookin. And it took me a lot longer than I expected to get this video out. Um, one, because I've been uh, really busy with other things. And two, because my opinion about this wheel has kind of been changing back and forth with the more time I spend with it. In my first draft of this review, I was gonna say something along the lines of, it only works well when using it to drive the type of cars that it was designed for. Meaning it's a steering wheel designed for GT race cars and using it to drive anything outside Side of those cars was really breaking the immersion for me but as I spent more time with this uh, wheel I've come to the conclusion that that's not 100% true. See, I've been mentally comparing this wheel to Fanatec's McLaren GT3 wheel, which I think feels at home across a wide range of race disciplines. I feel comfortable using the McLaren GT3 wheel uh, with GT cars, LMP cars, Formula cars, and even with road cars, which wasn't the case when I first started using the Thrustmaster Ferrari 488 GT3 wheel. But after a few months or so living with this thing, I'd say my opinion on that has changed quite a bit. It is perfect for GT and LMP endurance racing obviously but I think it works really well with open wheel and formula racing if you don't mind sacrificing the clutch paddle but using this wheel with road cars is where it starts to get kind of hit or miss for me I think this wheel works very well with fast 400 plus horsepower sports cars but it was when I tried to use this wheel with some of the slower 200 and 300 horsepower enthusiast road cars that's where the immersion starts to fall apart in my opinion I wanted to make sure I mentioned that in this review because I know that there's a lot of people that either don't have the budget or don't want to blow a budget on having a dedicated steering wheel for each racing game and racing discipline they like to participate in. I know a lot of guys need a steering wheel that can kind of be a jack of all trades. So uh, so yeah, I picked this bad boy up about a few months ago. I had been looking online, uh, but none of the online shops had them in stock. Yeah, man, Thrustmaster really needs to work on their supply issues. That has been a problem they've had even before the pandemic. Surprisingly, I was able to find one at a kind of sort of local electronic store. It's about an hour away, which is uh, considered local by American standards. <laughs> So yeah, uh, it set me back about $290, and I know the retail and list price is $249.99, but the area I bought this in has a super high sales tax on items like this. So yeah, in the box it comes with the wheel, obviously, and a quick release for the compatible belt-driven wheel bases, and a quick release for the new Thrustmaster T818 direct drive wheelbase, which uh, which I'll set aside for a future video. I, uh, I pulled this bad boy out of the box, and the first thing I notice is that it's really lightweight but not in a cheap way and more like a performance way even after I got it all put together it still only weighs just slightly over two pounds which is well under the three pound weight limit I think sim racing steering wheels should strive to stay under yeah man my TGT and TSXW had no problem spinning this thing around and even the old T300 made light work of this wheel the uh, the handle grips feel good to hold the buttons feel good to press the rotary dials feel good to turn the paddle shifters are adjustable, but the position that they come in from the factory is a perfect setting for me. My only complaint is that the magnetic paddle shifters don't have that signature snappy feel and sound that everyone likes. The paddle shifters on the 488 GT3 wheel have the feel and sound that your hands makes when you're popping your knuckles. <laughs> So yeah, uh, so yeah, the folks over at Thrustmaster were kind enough to supply us with an illustration of the wheel's dimensions over on their website, uh, which uh, <laughs> which also lets me know that someone over at Thrustmaster has been watching my videos because I don't remember Thrustmaster ever providing uh, illustrations of their wheel dimensions in the past, which was the reason why I started doing it in the first place. So yeah, Thrustmaster, I won't hold it against you, but I see you over there borrowing ideas from your boy. <laughs> Um, anyway, the uh, 488 GT3 launches with a super short compatibility list. It's even shorter than the SF1000 compatibility list when it launched. The 488 GT3 still works as a steering wheel with other racing games across the big three platforms, but there's a very short list of games that utilize the shift and warning LED light functions. Unfortunately, the LED lights are not functional at all on the Xbox One and Series platforms at the moment, which is kind of odd to me 
because the LED functions on the SF1000 are compatible with the Xbox consoles. So I'm not sure why that can't be the case with the 488 GT3 wheel. But the good news is that the 488 GT3 LED compatibility list is already starting to grow because I don't remember Le Mans Ultimate being on the list when I first started to rough draft this review. But now that game has been added as well. So hopefully the Xbox consoles will be added soon because without that feature, I can see this wheel losing its appeal with uh, the guys over there racing on that platform. The shift lights have a GT mode and F1 mode. The brightness can also be turned up or down, but I keep it in the factory settings because if I turn them up any brighter, I'll still be able to see them flashing when I close my eyes to go to sleep. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, one issue I've been having is the pit lane lights stay on when I play a set of course of composition. I don't know what that's about, but hopefully it'll be fixed in a future update. So, uh, so yeah, I'm going to wrap this thing up by saying, uh, that I'm really happy with my purchase. I like it when the sim racing hardware companies do these licensed replica steering wheels, especially when they can deliver a quality product at a reasonable price. I think the Ferrari 488 GT3 wheel is Thrustmaster once again showing a prime example that a company in this hobby doesn't have to over-engineer and overprice themselves out of the reach of their customers in order to produce a good product. And before I go, I know one of the questions I'm going to get asked is if I would recommend the 488 GT3 or the SF1000. And my answer to that is I really don't know. I personally like the SF1000 slightly more than the 488 GT3, but not enough to justify the extra $150. Uh, the SF1000 costs over the 488 wheel. I think they both can serve the same or similar functions. So it's really going to boil down to your budget and what gaming platform you use. So, uh, so yeah, I think I've touched over everything I wanted to cover in this video. I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. It's Debukin. I'm out.